If there's something you could tell your younger self, what would it be? You're gay. Ah, I've been so nervous to talk about it. Pretty much happy tears though this time at least. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm here with a get ready with me. I'm headed out to two events tonight. It is TIFF in Toronto, Toronto International Film Festival. So it's a busy time right now. So I've got an event with Smashbox and Mac. So I figured I would get ready, do a little bit of glam makeup and answer some of your questions because I asked you on Instagram the other day, ask me anything and <laughs> You asked, okay? So let's do this. Absolutely sweating as usual, so let me just pin back my hair. I'm gonna prime my face with the Smashbox Illuminate Glow Primer. I love this primer so much. It's really multi-use um, and looks great under makeup, over makeup, on its own, on your body, mix it in. Uh, it's really good. But I would say one question that I got a lot was, how are you? Um, and someone else said, are you happy? You seem genuinely happy and I love that for you. Uh <laughs> Am I happy? Like technically, yes, but guys, like I think my depression is really bad right now and um, it's like hard to see through the fog, kind of. Um, like technically everything is okay, but that's the thing with depression is you don't really, like rich people who seem to have it all are super depressed. The state of the world doesn't really help. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think like the grief and everything that's gone on in my life has just really led me to be like just feeling really tired and um, struggling a little bit. But in general, I am happy for sure. <laughs> I've been testing out this uh, Too Faced Soft Matte Oil Control Foundation and I've kind of been combining shades, wearing certain shades. I'm gonna wear honey. I thought this was an interesting question. Are you good at parallel parking? And actually, I'm kind of great. And let me tell you why. Um, when I was growing up in Newfoundland, I lived downtown, so you had to parallel park. So from the moment I started driving, I had no choice. When I got home, you had to parallel park because it was on street parking. I grew up in like, not the super cute jelly bean houses that you see, but I grew up downtown. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had to learn then for sure. And then uh, straight out of university, I sold cars at Toyota and uh, you had to do lots of, that was when I learned how to back in actually really well. So I have to say I'm a, I'm a pretty good parker. I think this foundation shade is a really good match for me. It's in the shade Honey. I haven't always had great matches from Too Faced, but this is good. It's neutral, not too yellow, not too pink. Okay, what are my thoughts on this season of Big Brother? Who do I want to win? So I actually just caught up on the most recent episode and I think this video will go up over the weekend. So. We'll see, uh, I won't be able to know who got eliminated, but okay, here are my initial thoughts. I think that Quinn, every time he does like a confessional diary, whatever, he is like such a Big Brother super fan that he comes in like wanting to have that moment that's gonna be aired and like have like, yeah, like he just always seems like he's wanting to have his Big Brother moment, but he's like so enthusiastic about it. Uh, Joseph is quite possibly one of the most cringe people I've ever seen in my life. Like, I don't know if he's purposefully trying to make Julie uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm like, mm, what's your track record with women, bud? Um, Angela, unhinged. Did I see something about TK being a twin? Sorry, t -core. I know someone named TK from Newfoundland from like 100 years ago. Oh, this looks, this looks so good. Oh my God, so nice. Who do I want to win? Maybe Chelsea? I think I like Chelsea the most. I don't really love that many of them, honestly. Uh, do you ever get anxiety with all the events you attend? That's my biggest fear. Uh, totally understand. I'm gonna use a little of this NARS brightener in Impossible Dream. I definitely, I don't get social anxiety anymore. Like I have been going to beauty events in Toronto now for seven years. I went to a Clarins event last night and was like, wow, Clarins was the first brand I ever went to an event in February of 2016, like a month after I moved to Toronto. And here I am now still still working with them which is really cool um so i don't necessarily get anxiety anymore because i know that i'm going to show up and like see somebody that i know or the way these events go you can kind of just show up be on your phone get your photos and leave sort of for the most part and i'm also a very chatty person like i'm not just doing this because like i'm introverted at home and want someone to talk to like i love talking to strangers i have no problem with these events going up and introducing myself whatever my issue is just like my general anxiety and depression disorder <laughs> Like, it's not social anxiety, it's just anxiety, anxiety. So like all day, I've been dreading going out tonight. I've been thinking like, should I cancel? Should I cancel? Should I cancel? I don't feel like I have the social energy. Um, 
because you know I, I spoke to a friend recently and they were like no it makes sense that you're kind of like socially drained quite a bit because no one goes out and like goes to like this many parties and like meets this many people in the run of a week you know uh like yesterday I went to two events I was supposed to go to three and I ended up canceling one of them this is the Kat Von D liquid gel contour in light medium neutral 70 but yeah like I probably talked to 30 plus people yesterday met 10 plus new people at minimum um and it's very social so come the weekend and stuff like sometimes I don't want to even like do anything which is not good um because now I don't feel like I have a life outside of my work and that's something that I'm working on don't ask me what my favorite hobby is unless you <laughs> trigger warning I have no idea don't know what I like yeah I would advise if you are someone who's going to these types of events definitely just like be forward and chat with people, compliment their outfit, ask them what they do. What are you doing here? Are you a content creator? Are you an editor? Are you with the brand? Talk about the products. Um, but yeah, I get just more like anxiety and I like have no mental energy and it just makes me anxious to have to go out and kind of like put on a smile and network and it's hard to say no to things because, you know, I'm on my own and this is my business and no one else is gonna go out and advocate for me. And being nice and networking goes very far in every industry. Being likable, <laughs> I'm telling you, is more important than the technical skill half the time. Unless you're like, uh, I don't know, a surgeon. And you know, even they need bedside manner. I've been using this concealer a lot lately. It's the Tarte Power Flex. I think it just is a really great shade for me, tan sand, and I really like the texture as well. It's not too matte, not too like greasy. Okay, I got this question a lot, and uh, I've been so nervous to talk about it because I'm just like scared that it's not actually real and want it to actually happen before it does happen because it's been a very dramatic and stressful process, but I bought a condo! so excited I'm moving out of here baby like this background is changing I know it's years overdue <laughs> but when you're depressed the last thing I'm thinking about is this fucking background I'm not gonna lie to you so um yeah I bought a condo and I move next week I take possession I had a call with the lawyer today to have like go over my signing package and everything moving my money around like I bank with Simply Financial who I love because they have like no fees for everything but goddamn moving your money around with them is tricky because they don't really have like a bank in person um and yeah being self-employed being uh you know technically single in the eyes of the government all of that getting financing was a nightmare I bought a condo and lost it um yeah, so there's been a lot on the go behind the scenes, and I did actually film, like, going and looking at condos over the past few months. Like, guys, I can't tell you how much stuff I've filmed over the past few months, and you haven't seen it, because my mental health. Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, there, and there's definitely are things I can do, but, like, it's hard. It's like having a broken leg and being like, run to the doctor, the medication's there, and you're kind of like, oh, well. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Honey Setting Powder. So I'm really excited. I can't believe it. In some ways, it's amazing and it's like a huge accomplishment and I know that, but at the same time, I'm like, I can't believe I spent that much money and got what I got considering, you know, the real estate market in Toronto and what I could have gotten in Newfoundland, what my friends are buying in other places in the country and seeing their homes. And obviously I'm not trying to come off ungrateful or like whatever but I've lived in my current condo for seven years. I moved in here with my boyfriend. I was straight, life was very different. Uh, this is the NARS Soft Matte Powder. I love these powders, except they're a little breakable. This is in the shade Offshore. But yeah, so I'm really excited. At my new place, there's gonna be tons of natural light. I'm gonna have a bedroom window, like I could cry. Like right now I have an interior bedroom that has like two doors that meet. It's this like inhumane thing that they do in Toronto and call it like a junior one bedroom because legally a room has to have a window. So they just put two glass doors and then it just feels like you're in a zoo uh, or a jail. And I've no natural light, just like I've lived in this condo for so long. It, it seems so much life, too much life. 
and part of my job is like sharing my life and I don't want to share my life because I don't like my space I don't like the space that I'm in it makes it really hard to work when I'm home 24 7 basically and my home is also kind of like a set like I remember describing to my real estate agent you know like I don't want to have too many windows because sometimes like certain not that I looked at many corner units because I was looking for one bedroom but like sometimes um you know I'd be like it's almost too many windows because I need like some walls I can film against that are sort of blank and just for privacy as well so that people aren't able to like spot where I live immediately this is the covergirl clean fresh brow pencil brow liner in soft brown who is she filling in her brows so I still can't, just cannot believe it and if you want to know more about it let me know I'm gonna try and like vlog here and there um but yeah I can't believe it I can't believe I'm moving I'm still not really packed like I just let me just show you actually I'll film this current like what I'm looking at right now which is just you're propped up on a box it's a shit show surrounding me currently but yeah I'm trying to I think I have a really hard time being present and really like taking in what's going on and I'm really trying to be like wow this is huge but it's also been very bittersweet in packing just because so much has happened here and I'm like coming across things that you know I don't know guys it's just it's a lot like I if you know me <laughs> if you've ever met me in person I've probably complained about where I live and now that I'm moving I'm kind of like oh, just it feels a little I don't know I've lived a lot of life here. I'm a very sentimental person. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't want to cry on YouTube anymore. Pretty much happy tears though this time at least. <laughs> For once. But I think also back to like the being present thing. It's it's interesting when you don't follow the kind of path of everybody else. Like I don't have a typical job. I don't have a typical 9 to 5, which is what I prefer. Um... You know, I, I live in a big city where the cost of living is like the most expensive in the country, some of the most expensive in the world. So what you can get if you want to be downtown and central, whatever, for the price of a huge house in Newfoundland, there's like a one bedroom condo in Toronto. And then I see my friends having babies and moving into huge homes and like whatever. And like, that's, well, I do want a big house, but I don't know that I necessarily want kids or what I want out of my life. Um, that was another question I got. But just because I'm not following that like typical path, it's hard to like sometimes gauge am I doing well or not. But also like everyone's on their own path and da 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 da. But still like comparison is definitely the thief of joy and it steals a lot of my joy sometimes. <laughs> I won't lie to you. But I did get asked, do you want kids? Which is kind of a personal question, but I'll answer it. Um, I don't think so. Like there's never in the run of a day am I like, wow, I wish there was a child here. You know, if anything, I'm like, oh, thank God. Thank God I have no one else to take care of because taking care of myself, I'm in the trenches as is. So like, <laughs> God bless that child. Um, so yeah, I don't really have a lot of family in general. I don't have any family in Toronto. Um, and you know, now that I'm no longer dating men, probably ever <laughs> again, uh, having a baby is even more of an undertaking financially emotionally mentally etc like you can't just do it by accident um and even if i was with a man i think what we've realized now is that they lied to us and it's really not as easy to get pregnant as they made it out to be uh this is the two-faced i'm just going to two face today uh born this way cold smolder nudes mini eyeshadow palette so a lot more considerations now as well in addition to just yeah I don't know just kind of feels unlikely given my age and how things are but when it comes to fur babies because I did get that question I know some people don't like equating the two <laughs> um, will I get another cat is Emily lonely etc etc I really want another cat like I miss Rue so much like I can't even talk about it um, I will cry again and I'm devastated. I'll never get over how that ended. I was actually looking at other cats. I was thinking about getting another Siamese or something similar. I miss the chattiness. Like I love Emily, but she's a lump on a log. Like you won't even know she's there. God bless her. Although she's been like driving me crazy the past two nights, like waking me up nonstop. She has to be like sleeping inside my freaking mouth. 
and will like walk on my face like if I turn over then she'll turn and walk and she has like no regard for your eyeballs or your nipples and just like walks on you and even though she's so small it's painful but it's <laughs> I was looking at getting another cat but uh, my partner actually got her own condo as well so um, now that we're going to be kind of like splitting our time differently I just figured it would be easier for me to not have a second cat right now because I can move Emily around pretty easily I can travel with her and whatnot so I think not at the very moment but definitely i miss having a pair of cats i miss having a siamese in the house so yeah i definitely would love that but i had this like really morbid thought the other day because i was like you know i'm in almost my mid-30s now i want to have cats always how many cats am i gonna have to watch die in the span of my life like i don't know if i can continue to adopt older cats like rue was five emily was eight I don't necessarily want kittens but I'm like I can't be doing this every like five years <laughs> it is taxing and I got some questions about if I would ever move back to Newfoundland probably not mostly because of the weather and just the lifestyle I don't think is for me anymore but it holds such a special place in my heart like I love it more now that I've left but I love it from afar you know <laughs> you might have people like that in your life um, but I also got the question favorite and le least favorite thing about living in Toronto least favorite the traffic 100 percent uh, especially where i live right now it is pandemonium all the time way too busy aggressive annoying entitled etc favorite thing about it also ironically on the flip side the accessibility how easy it is to get around i can walk i can transit i can uber there's so many different things like no matter what you're into there's something here for it whether it's food arts sports whatever it's all here it's so diverse but if I had to choose number, 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 number one, it's the food. Because I travel and I'm like, yeah, the food's okay, but it's better in Toronto. Like, you have the people from the country making it here in Toronto too because it's so diverse. Like, you don't even need to leave. And I think that's awesome. I got a question about the blue dress in my recent shopper's reel. That is from H&M. I'll link it below. I don't know what direction to go on my eyes. I'm going a little cooler toned. I think I might actually just take this shade out of the palette. YOLO. Um, but I also got the question, did you know you were interested in women when your last hetero relationship ended? I did not. I just knew I was mad at men. <laughs> I just knew men were scary. And I definitely had this thought where I was like, am I just doing this because I'm traumatized? Am I just doing this because, you know, I'm looking for connection, but I don't feel comfortable finding it in men? And I definitely had that thought initially. But then I realized in looking back at certain things that those were really gay thoughts. <laughs> that straight girls don't think that. Like straight girls don't think, ugh, I wish I had a phase where I kissed girls in college. Straight girls, um, I did a video about this when, I think around when I came out, but I used to always say like I hated when guys play the guitar. Like it makes me sick. I don't understand why women like fall to their knees about it. <laughs> and uh, then... I'm gonna use this House Labs bronzer, hit pan. Um, then when I worked in radio, we had this woman come in who was like a new artist for Sony. And I worked at a radio station. They were like, okay, you're gonna interview her. She's gonna play her song live on air. And for years, I'd be like, ah, uh, her playing the guitar is the only time I ever liked anybody playing the guitar. I followed her on Instagram and like felt some type of way when she got engaged <laughs> felt some type of way when she had a baby all the while i had a boyfriend and not recognizing that that was like kind of a crush because again when it comes to like not feeling represented in terms of like you know i'm not necessarily following the same path with my career or um with children i'm not following the typical path when it comes to romance either there's no representation i don't know what it looks like i don't like women the way that men like women so i never realized i liked women because i don't want to objectify them i don't want to go up and touch their tits or whatever guys want to do like I, you know so I never clocked it as that and I think it's really interesting that it took me 30 years to come to that conclusion but it's not surprising that it took me that long um there was also like if you remember throwback to this because I was actually showing my girlfriend clips of America's Next Top Model over the weekend I was showing her all the bad um I was like this shaped me so I think you need to watch it 
I'm um, gonna mix these two blushes together. I have to wear an old MAC blush, Fleur Power, this is old as the hills. And then I'm gonna mix it with, uh, I think this is Dolce Vita from NARS. But like Kim from America's Next Top Model, like she stuck out to me um, and she was like a little more masculine because I'm definitely attracted to women that are more masculine presenting. I'm more fem feminine presenting um, or like just have like a more androgynous look. That's definitely my vibe and that's not, you know, represented in the media so you don't really see it. So no, to answer your question, I didn't know but I did immediately get on Tinder and like be like said it to women and men because I was like, I don't know boys, <laughs> you're on thin ice. And I have a hard time imagining going back to dating men. Like I don't think that they could fulfill me emotionally for sure, physically, I don't know, doesn't seem like it. Historically, they have not. <laughs> Let's just say that. If there's something you could tell your younger self, what would it be? You're gay. Leave the white boys of Newfoundland alone. What is the hardest thing about being a BIPOC woman in the content creator community? Ooh, I could talk about this forever. Overall, the hardest thing is, is like you don't really know what you don't know. So like you don't know that you didn't get a job because of your skin tone uh, or because of your um, like the way you look or whatever it is. I'm gonna use MAC Global Glow, Glow. I've never actually used this before. But you always think, you know, if you are BIPOC, you know, I grew up in Newfoundland, I always thought, are they gonna be surprised when I walk in the room? And you know, my name is Samantha and I look like this. Oh, that's really pretty. And the same way I know there's creators or sorry, conversations in boardrooms in which they have me next to like two or three other girls who are mixed or black or whatever it is. And they're picking one of us to go in the campaign because we all can't go in the campaign because that would be, you know, making a statement to have three BIPOC women in there. So I do feel in some ways I need to work harder than other people. But at the same time, I don't want to come off as entitled and be like, I'm working harder than other people and not getting anything out of it. But I also know that systemic racism is a thing. And I thank you for following me if you don't look like me, because I know based on like even people that I know within the industry, and friends that I've met mostly only follow people who look like them. Like maybe I'm making a huge overstatement and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of white women especially mostly follow white women who look like them or historically that's kind of been the point versus I've always followed everybody because I'm like, okay, you're oily, I'm oily, I like the way you talk, whatever it is, but people will just like, find their people who look like them. And if you're white, you have a plethora of people to choose from versus I do not. Like that is literally why I started my YouTube channel because I didn't see anybody who looked like me. Camera cut me off, but I think it's definitely gotten 3000 times better, but we still have a lot of work to do. Like even at events, I'll go to events like we have a world renowned makeup artist and he's gonna match you. And he grabs like shade 500 mahogany. I'm like, bro, it's not it. I got one of the worst blowouts of my life at an event and many, many times have I gone to events and they've absolutely ruined my hair. I feel like a burden. It feels uncomfortable. I had to call them after, message them after me like, please don't use my photos. And then I don't want to seem difficult and like I'm not going to get the job again or I've had to turn down money because the brand doesn't support black creators or they don't have a shade for me and white creators can so easily go, you know, take that campaign, no problem. But yet I'm held to a higher standard because I do talk about shade ranges and things like that. Um, so it's, it's definitely tricky. And I think the thing that I personally struggle with the most is being mixed race because I don't know how to label myself. People don't like it if I call myself black sometimes, you know, or even if I say like this sunscreen works for deeper skin, people will be like, well, you don't have dark skin. And I'm like, I never said I did. I'm just saying like, I review hundreds of products a year and I can tell you that this will work for your skin tone or this won't work for your skin tone. The same way I can like estimate that it might work for dry skin when I have oily skin. Um, so it's a little tricky because people, especially now in shorter form content, tend to label themselves like what a mom of three is wearing for work today, or um, I'm, a, I'm plus size and this is what I'm doing, or I'm whatever, you know? So I'm like, I don't know where to label myself and I don't want to even, like, I'm just me. <laughs> so yeah, maybe that's my own thing, but that's, that's what I struggle with. Okay, this is a good question. This is from Carla in St. John's. Hey girl. Um, she said, "What? who is your favorite housewife of all time? Hers is Luann. And that's amazing. That's super iconic. I actually, I don't know if I've ever chosen an overall 
favorite. Like I definitely have my favorites from season to season. Like my most controversial favorite is probably Phaedra because I just think everything that comes out of her mouth is hilarious and she's so quick with it. And I just love that about her. But she is problematic and what she did to um, Portia was absolutely insane and the fact that they're letting her back on the show is <laughs> very interesting. Uncontroversial favorite, perhaps Nicole from Miami. I think she's fabulous. Absolutely they need to get rid of and they never will, Teresa and Alexis. They're the exact same person. <sighs> so, the most smooth-brained, unself-aware people I've ever seen in my life. But did I say that? I got a lot of questions about my hair and I have a curly hair routine coming um, but one thing that I've been doing lately to like keep my hair looking good is styling it in the shower. Uh, I'm gonna use this Rem Beauty eyeliner BRB. So I actually took these two clips literally out of my shower and <clears throat> I keep now a leave-in conditioner, a styler, and a gel in the shower with me. I was gonna say portion my hair, like divide my hair in the shower and get it sopping wet while I'm adding in the products and it's really helpful. It actually kind of started because I lost my Mr. Bottle, which I actually just found because I've been packing. Um, but yeah, it's good. I recommend. I'm going to spray myself down with some One Size On Till Dawn setting spray. Got a couple of makeup questions. Figured out an answer. I actually just got a new Clarins mascara. This is the Wonder Volume Mascara. Clarins is criminally underrated, okay? Their skincare is so good. And then from their makeup, love a lot of it, but their mascaras and their lip stuff, whew, so good. Um, but someone asked, what is my holy grail product from Sephora for under $25 or less? Honestly, their Sephora collection is so good. But if I had to pick, actually, I'll give you two options because you know me. I needed to clutter all of this, by the way, so stay, stay tuned because it's about 27,000 years of decluttering too late. I don't know how I'm going to tackle it, but okay, my two recommendations from Sephora. Let me just finish my freaking mascara on this side. The formula is not super wet. It's like a traditional brush. My two recommendations, 100%, the uh, Sephora Cream Lip Stains. Maybe not the shade. I love shade number one. It's a great red. And then this blush, the char like this, any of their colorful blushes, this is a shimmer one in the shade Charmed. It has been probably my most worn blush of the year. I got also another question about peachy blushes. So this is kind of a double whammy, but I was wearing this non-stop. So good. I also love their Micro Smooth powder but did I hear that's being discontinued which is crazy because is it is it is so good but during Sephora sale is um obviously the best time to pick it up because it's on sale but normally instead of doing the 20 percent I'm gonna say they do 30 percent and their Sephora collection stuff is good and always big big shade ranges oh I love this mascara I've really been trying to embrace my hair, like even when the curls are not perfect and super shiny and defined and things are a little frizzy, especially for like glam events like this, because I feel like curly hair girls have a tendency to straighten their hair for formal things. And I don't think that always has to be the case. I also got asked about my favorite perfume. This is the only one I don't have packed away right now. So definitely a favorite. It's the YSL Black Opium, but this is the over red. So it has cherry in it. So it's like really sexy and deep, but still sweet. And I get a lot of compliments about this one. I love it so much. And I love the packaging. The YSL scents are so good. Now to pick my lipstick. I have all the MAC reds because the Smashbox theme is black and red and then I'm going to a MAC party after. So I think chili, chili is so nice. Um, but yeah, I got asked the question, um, what provinces have I traveled to? What provinces do I want to travel to? And or also kind of coupled with, um, do I have any like fun trips coming up or brand trips or anything? And I did actually get invited to one in Whistler in like two months. So I'm really excited. I've been to BC, but I've never been to Whistler. Um, and going on someone else's dime is the best way to travel, baby. Uh, this is Russian red. I'm going to just like go through all the MAC reds here that I grabbed. These are the newest formula. So they're a little more smooth. They're a little less 
dry than the originals. This is Lady Danger. This used to be a favorite. And then the driest, most crayon-like lipstick of all time is Ruby Woo, but a new and improved formula. So I think that's exciting because it's such a beautiful blue-based red. makes your teeth look really white. And that is Ruby Woo, which I think, honestly, I'm kind of in between that and Chili. I also had someone ask about how I've been dealing with my grief since I lost my mom and they lost their mom recently. Honestly not well, like <laughs> I could still cry about it all the time um, and like my mom and I had a complicated relationship so it feels like there's just like so much unfinished business and I don't really know how to get over that. Um, definitely need to, my therapist is freaking pregnant, like seriously. I've been saying a lot in my personal life. I've been saying seriously when it's something I don't like. I'm like seriously, seriously, and that's just how I feel all the time. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm doing my best, and that's all you can ask for, I guess. This is a Fenty lip liner in browned out. Um, yeah, it's it's complicated. I mean, honestly, I just really feel for my grandmother having lost her daughter. Like losing a child is horrible. And yeah, I went home to Newfoundland this summer to attend like the graveyard mass that kind of happens every year. And yeah, it just I think this move coupled with my grief has brought up a lot of feelings of loneliness. Let me just throw in a cry at the end um, and just kind of feeling like I'm always doing things on my own and not having like parents there to be that comfort and be that safety net you know it's just me so I also got questions like how do you stay motivated blah blah I'm like I have no choice <laughs> it's just me guys like there's no one coming to help um so yeah and like I started my channel and whatever like literally out of fun and it's like something that I love to do and I love to share so to be able to do it as a job is just like amazing um but yeah that's that <laughs> sorry let's end on that note I'm gonna wear Max Ruby Woo because it's just such a classic like how can I not kind of giving like mod vibes a little bit I feel like hold on okay did not do a great job the pimple above my lip too it's so painful and I'm gonna mix in a little L'Oreal Gloomy <laughs> Lumi lotion with Lumi Glotion with my body lotion just a little little glow so here's the finished look. Thanks so much for getting ready with me. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions. It was actually a giveaway on my Instagram and I just mailed out the packages this week. They were stuffed with makeup because I'm packing to go, baby. So there's lots of stuff to give away. I'll be doing another giveaway on my Instagram actually as well. So if you're not following me there, be sure to do so. But as always, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, not X, I'm never calling it X, and TikTok at Samantha Jane YT. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!